I wonder whether I'd be meeting you here, Potter. Quirin smiled. His face wasn't twitching at all. But, but I thought... Snake! Snake, he was... Zephyrus! <laughs> yes, yes, Severus does seem the type, doesn't he? So useful to have him swooping around like an overgrown bat next to him, who will suspect. Poor stuttering Professor Quirr. Harry couldn't take it in. This couldn't be true. He couldn't. But Snake tried to kill me. No, 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 no. I tried to kill you. Your friend Miss Granger accidentally knocked me over as she rushed to set fire to Snape at that Quidditch match. She broke my eye contact with you. And had a few seconds, and it have got you of your broom. I'd have managed it before then, if Snape hadn't been muttering his little countercurse, trying to save you. Snape was trying to save me? Of course. Why do you think he wanted to referee your next match? was trying to make sure I didn't do it again. Funny, really. He needed to have bothered. I couldn't do anything with Dumbledore watching. All the other teachers thought Snape was trying to stop Gryffindor from winning. He did make himself popular. And what a waste of time. And after all that, I'm going to kill you. Tonight. Quirrell snapped his fingers. Rogues sprang out of thin air and wrapped themselves tightly around Harry. You're too noisy to leave, Potter. Scaring around the school on Halloween like that. For all I knew, you'd see me coming to look at what was guarding the stone. You let the troll in! Certainly. I have a special gift with trolls. You must have seen what I did to the one in the chamber back there. Unfortunately. While everyone else was running around looking for it, Snape, who already suspected me, went straight up to the third floor to head me off. And not only did my troll fail to beat you to death now, that three-headed dog didn't even manage to bite Snape's leg off properly. Now, wait quietly, Potter. I need to examine this interesting mirror. It was only then that Harry realized what was standing behind Quirrell. It was the mirror of Earl's head. This mirror is the key to finding the stone. Quirrell murmured, tapping his way around the frame. Trust Dumbledore to come up with something like this. But he is in London. I'll be far away by the time he gets back. All Harry could think of doing was to keep Quirrell talking and stop him from concentrating on the mirror. I, I, I saw you! I saw you and Snape in the forest. Yes. He was on to me by that time. Trying to find out how far I'd go. He suspected me all along. Tried to frighten me. As though he could. When I had Lord Voldemort on my side, Quirrell stared hungrily into the mirror. I see the stone. I'm presenting it to my master. But where, but where is it? Harry struggled against the ropes binding him. But they didn't give. He had to keep Quirrell from giving his whole attention to the mirror. But Snape always seemed to hate me so much. Oh, he does. Heavens, yes. He was at Hogwarts with your father, didn't you know? They loathed each other. But he never wanted you dead. But I heard you a few days ago. Sorry. I thought Snape was threatening you. For the first time, a spasm of fear flitted across Quirrell's face. Sometimes, I find it hard to follow my master's instructions. He's a great wizard, and I am weak. You mean, he was there in the classroom with you? He is with me wherever I go. I met him when I traveled around the world. A foolish young man I was then, full of ridiculous ideas about good and evil. Lord Voldemort showed me how wrong I was. There is no good and evil. 
there is only power, and those too weak to seek it. Since then, I have served him faithfully, although I have let him down many times. He has had to be very hard on me. He does not forgive mistakes easily. When I failed to steal the stone from Gringotts, he was most displeased. He punished me. Decided he would have to keep a close watch on me. Quirrell's voice trailed away. Harry was remembering his trip to Diagon Alley. How could he have been so stupid? He'd seen Quirrell there that very day, shaking hands with him in the Leaky Cauldron. Curse you, mirror. I don't understand. Is the stone inside the mirror? Should I break it? Harry's mind was racing. What I want more than anything else in the world at the moment is to find the stone before Quirrell does. So if I look in the mirror, I should see myself finding it, which means I'll see where it's hidden. But how can I look without Quirrell realizing what I'm up to? He tried to edge to the left, to get in front of the glass without Quirrell noticing. But the ropes around his ankles were too tight. He tripped and fell over. Quirrell ignored him. He was still talking to himself. What does this mirror do? How does it work? Help me. Help me, master. Help me. And to Harry's horror, a voice answered. And the voice seemed to come from Quirrell himself. Quirrell grounded on Harry. Yes. Potter! Come here! He clapped his hands once, and the ropes binding Harry fell off. Harry got slowly to his feet. Come here! Harry walked toward him. I must lie. I must look and lie about what I see. That's all. He thought desperately. Now, look in the mirror and tell me what you see. Quirrell moved close behind him. Harry breathed in the funny smell that seemed to come from Quirrell's turban. He closed his eyes, stepped in front of the mirror, and opened them again. He saw his reflection, pale and scared looking at first. But a moment later, the reflection smiled at him. It put its hand into its pocket and pulled out a blood red stone. It winked and put the stone back in its pocket. And as it did so, Harry felt something heavy drop into his real pocket. Somehow, incredibly, he'd gotten the stone. Well! What do you see? Harry screwed up his courage. I, I see myself shaking hands with Dumbledore. I, I, I've won the house cup for Gryffindor. God damn it, get out of the way! As Harry moved aside, he felt the Philosopher's Stone against his leg. Dare he make a break for it? But he hadn't walked five paces before a high voice spoke. Though queer wasn't moving his lips. He lies! He lies! Potter, come back here and tell me the truth! What do you see? Let me speak to him face to face. But Master, you are not strong enough. I have strength enough for this. Harry felt as if Devil's Snare was rooting him to the spot. He couldn't move a muscle. Petrified, he watched as Quirrell reached up and began to unwrap his turban. What was going on? The turban fell away. Quirrell's head looked strangely small without it. Then, he turned slowly on the spot. Harry would have screamed, but he couldn't make a sound. 
where there should have been a bat to Quirrell's head, there was a face. The most terrible face Harry had ever seen. It was chalk white with glaring big red eyes and slits of nostrils. Harry Potter, we meet again. For you have seen what I've become. Mere shadow and vapor. I have fallen only when I can share another's body. But there have always been those willing to let me into the hearts and minds. Unicorn blood has sustained me these past weeks. You so faithful will drinking it for me in the forest. And once I have the elixir of life, I will be able to create a body of my own. Now, why don't you give me that stone in your pocket? Feeling suddenly surged back into Harry's legs. He stumbled back. Come oh, here, fool! Better save your own life and join me. Or I promise you'll die begging for mercy as your parents did. Liar! Quirrell was walking backward at him so that Voldemort could still see him. The evil face was now smiling. How touchy. I find bravery. Yes, why your parents were brave. They killed your father first, and she put up a courageous fight. But your mother needn't have died. She was trying to protect you. Now give me the stone, unless you want her to have died in vain! Never! Harry sprang toward the flame door, but Voldemort screamed, Seize him! And the next second, Harry felt Quirrell's hand close to his wrist. At once, a little sharp pain seared across Harry's car. His head felt as though it was about to split in two. He yelled, struggling with all his might. And to his surprise, Quirrell let go of him. The pain in his head lessened. He looked around wildly to see where Quirrell had gone and saw him hunched in pain, looking at his fingers. They were blistering before his eyes. Season! Season! Shrieked Voldemort again, and Quirrell lunged, knocking Harry clean off his feet, landing on top of him, both hands around Harry's neck. Harry's car was almost blinding him with pain, yet he could see Quirrell howling in agony. Master, I cannot hold it! My hands! My hands! And Quirrell, though pinning Harry to the ground with his knees, let go of his neck and stared, bewildered at his own parts. Harry could see they looked burned, raw, red, and shiny. Then him, you fool, and be done! Quirrell raised his wand to perform a deadly curse, but Harry, by instinct, reached up and grabbed Quirrell's face. <laughs> Quirrell rolled off him, his face blistering too, and then Harry knew. Quirrell couldn't touch his bare skin, not without suffering terrible pain. His only chance was to keep hold of Quirrell, Keep him in enough pain to stop him from doing the curse. Harry jumped to his feet, caught Quirrell by the arm, and hung on as tight as he could. Quirrell screamed and tried to throw Harry off. The pain in Harry's head was building. He couldn't see. He could only hear Quirrell's terrible shrieks and Voldemort's yells. Something gold was glinting just above him. The snitch! He tried to catch it, but his arms were too heavy. He blinked. It 
wasn't the snakes at all. It was a pair of glasses. How strange. He blinked again. The smiling face of Albus Dumbledore swam into view above him. Good evening, Harry.